Hi, my name is Doug. Welcome back to Emerald Hill Skies. Unfortunately, the skies are a little bit cloudy uh, this afternoon and tonight. Uh, lots of wind. I don't think it's going to be a very good night for observing. So I'm just here in the observatory trying to take care of some chores. But as I was doing that, I thought maybe one of the things I ought to do is just pause long enough to tell you about this Pure Tech Adjustable Height Pier. And here's why it means a lot to me. Look at how little space we have between the top of the OTA, the top of the optical tube assembly, and this roof beam. I mean, it's just uh, three or four inches, right? Unfortunately, that's the case with a lot of these roll-off roof observatories. If the scope is low enough not to be struck by the roof when it rolls on and off, then it's also too low to see the horizon. Thus, a great application for this PureTech adjustable height pier. It gives you about 20 inches of lift. So right now it's at about a 34 inch height that's at its low. Next we're going to roll off the roof and you'll see how that we can raise up the scope to be able to peer out across those horizons. So let's roll off the roof next. Okay, we've got the roof rolled off and as you can see uh, we're ready to raise the pier. Uh, it's just a push button uh, like a remote control kind of operation and you can see the the pier starts raising. Now if you polar align it at any position, then it stays polar aligned for all the rest of the positions. Now this would be useful for a visual observer uh, so that he or she didn't have to keep moving around in a height adjustable chair. Instead, you can adjust the pier to the height of your eye, you know, whether sitting or standing. In my case, since it's electronically assisted astronomy or EAA, I'm actually observing inside a building over there about 200 feet away, everything's remote. So for me, I'm just interested if the polar align stays. And I can tell you that it has. Uh, since I polar aligned when we installed the pier, I haven't uh, taken another look at it at all. It's, it's been uh, spot on at each of the observing uh, instances that I've done two or three times a week ever since we built the observatory. So it'll go up to about uh, 54 inches from the 34, so about 20 inches up, which was exactly what I needed to be able to get above the horizon. And now, across the top of the observatory, I can literally get to one and two degrees above the horizon. Of course, my trees are sometimes four and five degrees, but you get the picture. Uh, this scope would be lifted up above the walls of any observatory. Now, I know some uh, users would build their observatory with a south wall that would drop, and that would be useful if the only time you ever needed to observe something was in the south, I know you can argue that most objects are going to be eventually visible, but in, for instance, a Messier Marathon, when you have to catch something in the northeast uh, near sunrise, there are times when I would love to be able to look at the horizon uh, in maybe an east or a westerly direction, maybe a, a conjunction of planets or Mercury near the horizon at the end of... Uh, uh, sunset or at the beginning of sunrise. All those things have been possible primarily because of this pier. It is rock solid. Uh, I don't know, this is a this is a CEM 70 uh, mount. It probably weighs 40 pounds. The scope probably weighs another 40 pounds. It's not even sneezing. I think this would hold uh, a couple or 300 pounds. It's that, uh, it's that solid. Uh, the folks at PureTech worked with us to design the observatory so that this height would be exactly right and uh, when you're done at the end of the night you just uh, lower it again uh, for a person doing EAA remotely I mean real remotely you can actually buy their uh, observatory control software with an observatory control box and raise and lower this remotely over the internet using uh, uh, software that they'll be glad to furnish you with in my case I I come into the observatory and turn things on. It takes about five minutes. I raise the scope and then I go back inside for the rest of the night observing. And then I come back out at night, lower it and close the roof manually. So in my case, I didn't need that, but it's, it's available if you did need it. Uh, I love how quiet it is. I think you could use it all night long. It's not gonna, it's not gonna bother you. I love the fact that it's uh, completely stable from one inch to the next and that you get it up uh, 54 inches so it lets you uh, be able to raise a scope like this one and see all the horizons. So you don't have to try to figure out how to make a drop-off wall 
in a roll-off rift observatory like this toward the east or the west. I don't know how you do that. So I guess uh, all that to say, I'm really excited that I uh, managed to switch to this, and it was a switch. I had originally ordered just a standard uh, pier that just was solid. And now when I look back, I wonder, how would this have worked if I sized it to be able to meet the needs of the roof rolling across the scope, then this is what I'd be stuck with. I'd be stuck with, you know, a 30 degree horizon. Uh, this thing makes all the difference in the world and I uh, highly recommend it. I had to pay full price for it. I didn't get a discount. I didn't get a review copy of it. Uh, sadly, I would have loved to have gotten a discount, but it's, uh, it's really worth the investment and uh, I hope it'll last for a lifetime. So just thought I'd pass along uh, one beggar telling another where to find bread. Hope you have a great day and thanks for stopping by. If you like content like this, don't, hit, hit the, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Maybe click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this and also uh, maybe click the bell if you want to be notified uh, when we do uh, videos like this. Thanks and stop back by. We'll see you then. God bless. Goodbye.